Welcome to Yuri Experience and today I want to talk to you about male body. I promised you sex ed and I kinda deliver. Today's video is about male body. It is a topic that I mostly, so that, that I know the most from all the topics that will be discussed in sex ed because you know I'm a male. Today we will mostly discuss anatomy, physiology, like differences, what is the male body different to a female body, some characteristical stuff and also intimate parts. The whole psychology stuff, gender norms, gender roles, sexuality and maybe some of intimate topics will be covered in independent videos. They more, are more like a basics of male body. Yeah, let's start, let's go into it because there's a lot to talk about. Yo. But obviously before we do it, I have to tell you that this is your experience and I'm Yuri. Here I'm sharing my different experiences, my different knowledge and today for example about male body. And yes, I do two videos per week. Both of them are cool in my personal opinion. Mondays and Thursdays I upload them to YouTube and other platforms. If you will enjoy this video, please drop a like and you can also subscribe to the channel, it will help development, the development of the channel, it will also help you to stay in touch, you know that how it works. Yeah, let's go. But another thing before we really let go into the topic, small disclaimer, this whole video has educational purpose, it doesn't have any other purpose than that. It doesn't have any sexual or erotic or porno purpose. Only educational purpose, just to be clear. We start almost at the very beginning. I don't know how many people do know that, but all of us, all of the humanity starts as a kind of a female something, a female embryo. Only after six weeks after creation of embryo, we develop, start developing some male, typically male traits like genitalia. Prior to that, basically all of us look the same. I will tell you even more. Prior to puberty, most of us don't really have a huge, some huge differences in anatomy and physiology. I mean, except for typical stuff, most of the people are actually pretty similar in their opportunities and possibilities and physical abilities and stuff like that. Male, female, doesn't matter. So basically, when puberty hits, it hits really, really hard. Basically, most of our physiological differences between male and female body establish themselves during puberty. That's the time when male bodies start producing testosterone in bigger amounts than female bodies and female bodies start to produce estrogen in bigger amounts than male bodies. Both of these things are hormones and both are kind of accepted as being um, sex hormone. So it is the hormone that defines sex, defines sex of the body. Like, are you male or are you a female? Both of these hormones are in all types of bodies, but amounts of them are different for male and female bodies. Male bodies, more t testosterone than estrogen. Female bodies, more estrogen than testosterone. And it is not healthy if the amount is switched. I mean, depending on the reason, if it is conscious decision, it is a different topic, but if it just happened because, for example, of beer, it is not a, bad, it is not a good thing. Some general things that are different in male body to female, in comparison to female body. It is easier for male bodies to grow more muscle mass. It is also directly connected to testosterone and amount of testosterone, which is why most of men will have bigger amount of muscle mass. Normally also this muscle mass will be more effective. And that is directly connected to the fact that most of male bodies have higher level of metabolism than female bodies. It is directly connected to the fact that muscle mass burns more calories just by existing than fat mass. And I don't want to say that all females are fat, I just want to say that bigger muscle mass, more energy is burned than higher metabolism and basically we need to eat more food to sustain our energy level. Which leads to the fact that it is more difficult to, to for male bodies to become fat. Then the thing, it is an Adam apple which is Adam's apple which is more prominent in male bodies than in female bodies and what is in there is a 
place where hormones are produced and it exists basically both in female bodies and in male bodies but the form and prominence is different for sex of the body and also it is connected to how our voice is made so how our vocal cords work that is basically one of the reasons why male why male bodies or male voices crack during puberty because this thing starts to growing and then voice cracks yeah another thing or rather two things that are connected to male body is boldness uh, bold it is more typical for male bodies to become bold or to male, male heads to become bold than to female bodies for female bodies it is more than it's more it is actually not typical male bodies it is normal female bodies it is just it happens because of some reasons but normally it is not the case only male bodies or male heads do, uh, lose hair in that amount or in that form but what male heads have instead of that is beard most of female bodies don't grow beard and overall most of female bodies have rather less hair not i cannot say that overall less hair or maybe less volume but the density and the and the color is normally less prominent than by male in on the male bodies that's also kind of a difference between male bodies and female bodies amount of hair on our bodies almost overall or almost everywhere but not everywhere completely you know like that part uh, it's pretty similar and the last point i will cover in this general category is thicker skin it is I didn't know that prior to today, but it kind of makes sense. Male bodies have thicker skin. It is, I'm not sure what is connected to it, except for testosterone maybe, but it is kind of effect. We have thicker skin. Yeah, that is why when we are starting to go into intimate parts or intimate feelings, male bodies need stronger messages, messages, massages, this word, than female bodies. Male bodies will not feel like in the same way than female bodies if you know i i had i hope you understand what i mean we need more pressure when message message is made not as female bodies female bodies are more sensitive to their stuff now let's go into main 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 difference between female and male body uh, in terms of anatomy at least and that is intimate parts i will not really go into breasts because first i want to i will make an independent video about breasts but second the difference between male and female bodies in that regard is not as huge as people uh, as people think male bodies actually also have milk glands we can lactate we don't do it because of different hormonal levels but technically it is possible for male bodies to lactate too it's also not always healthy for male bodies because male bodies are not actually made to do that but as i said already we can now will come the image and i want to prepare you it will be an anatomical image of a penis and overall this whole reproductive system of male body i prepared you i told you that so don't scream at me right now Normally reproductive systems are divided in outer and inner reproductive system and I will not cover each individual point because for most of people it's not there of that high importance if you want me uh, if you want me to do that you can write it in the comments and I will do it at some point I will go really like in depth in anat male anatomy in the outer reproductive system we basically have penis and we have balls that's like if majorly if we are talking majorly that's pretty much it let's talk about them for a moment penis penis consists of at least two parts and that is a shaft and that is a head it's this the head name is not official names there's an official name for that too but that's what most people use both of these are filled with muscles nerves blood systems and whatnot but important point there is no bone in there and i know it was kind of a question that was going over the internet no there's no bones in penis it's like this tissue thing speaking of tissues in the penis is are different types of tissues and some of them they are like kind of spongious tissues they allow penis to become erect how does it happen i will cover a little bit later but that's what you need to know right now important information you can break a penis 
although there are no bones inside of it, you can rupture some of the blood vessels and it will hurt a lot. And also, if you don't do anything about that, it can lead to erectile dysfunction, which I will cover in a moment. The average size of an erected penis is around 5 inches, and the values differ from source to source, but actual sizes can be really different. There is like a big amount of bigger and smaller and whatnot. There is no like real good... You, you cannot just say 5 inches and expect it from everybody. Actually, no, rather I would not expect it from everybody. Speaking of values, I don't think it will be something new for you, but people are discussing the average size or enjoyable size of the penis. And most of men, and I know, I'm not sure why, but it kind of makes sense, most of men associate their manliness with their penises and their penis being able to do its job. And it its job is to participate effectively in the reproductive system and also in sex. Sex is a slightly different topic, that we will discuss it later. That is why for a lot of men the discussion about penis size is nothing really nice, <laughs> because expectations are normally pretty high, like this number of 5 inches in erected state. Not everybody knows these numbers and also the most interesting point that a lot of this pressure comes actually from men. Let's say yes, toxic masculinity and stuff. But most of women, I think the number was around 80% uh, in some statistics, in some questionnaire. A lot of women are actually satisfied with the size of penis of their partner. And that's a fact. And that's what I want you to hear too. It doesn't matter what kind of body do you have. Pe the size of the penis doesn't matter as much as you think. And Although I do understand that all of men go through this I, thoughts Ooh, is my penis too small? Is my penis too big? Is my penis too quick? If you know what I mean. But although these thoughts are normal, actually it doesn't matter that much. At least according to statistics. Most of women are satisfied with the size of penis of their partner. And also there are a lot of things that you can do in addition to that. And for that I will make a lot of videos in the future. But overall, penis is not the only thing that can help you to pleasure your partner. Doesn't matter what sex your partner has. Penis helps, obviously, in, in terms of some interactions. But it's not the only thing. Small brief discussion. There is foreskin on some penises. Actually, there is foreskin on all of the penises, but sometimes this foreskin is cut off, if you... Yes, I think I can call it like that. It's called circumcision. Sometimes it has different religious backgrounds, sometimes some other ethical, I don't know. No, I don't think they're ethical. It doesn't make sense to me, personally. Sometimes there are some medical reasons, but overall, around... Uh, the estimate is that around 30% of men or male bodies are circumcised. So basically most of men are not circum circumcised, circumcised and have this foreskin. Is it bad? No. Is it good? No, it's just skin, basically. It doesn't make your penis worse or better. You just need to be slightly more uh, careful with cleaning because then you need to pull the skin away and clean there properly. But overall, it doesn't have any... It, at least there wasn't observed any difference, huge difference in terms of sex life, speaking of you have foreskin or you don't have it. Balls are in the ball sack. So there is like this sack of skin and uh, inside are balls. These balls are producing semen, which is responsible for making people pregnant, female bodies pregnant, and it is also responsible for producing testosterone, which is also an interesting fact. Why are these balls outside of our body? They need to be a little bit colder than our body itself, so than, than that part of our body. That is why our bodies develop a system where our balls are outside, but depending on the temperature outside, or like around that area, uh, that ball sack can relax itself so balls will go lower or contract itself so balls will go higher. So the balls are in perfect 
temperature for fertility. The major parts of inner reproductive systems are prostate, seminal vesicle, and that's pretty much it. The honorable mentioning for bladder because we will discover it a little bit too and there are a lot of canals that connect everything with everything so basically both are connected with uh, seminal, ve uh, semi seminal vesicle the seminal vesicle is connected to with prostate bladder is also connected with prostate and then prostate is connected with the tip of our penis with the tip of our head and it is called the opening or where everything comes out of is called urethra how does it more or less work male bodies both produce Semen. Then this semen is transported through different channels to seminal vesicle. And there semen to the semen are added a couple of different things which actually creates this whole sperm thing, liquid. And there are like proteins, there are vitamins and stuff like that. Why do we need it? Because our semen is alkaline and liquid in vaginas is acidic because of different reasons i will cover that in an independent video about female bodies but the fact is they their vaginas inside of their vaginas the liquid is acidic our semen wouldn't survive in that liquid if it would stay like that that is why we need this whole protein stuff and different stuff to cover semen to protect it from liquid so it can come to its destination. What role does prostate play? Prostate is, except for everything else, is also an organ, it's not very big, walnut size, which is deciding basically what comes out of our penis. Does urine come out? and we need to get rid of urine from time to time to get rid of different liquids or salts or ammonia or whatnot or does sperm come out it is extremely important to divide these two things because again our urine is acidic and our sperm is alkaline they cannot really work together that is why when we urinate we cannot ejaculate we cannot throw out sperm but when we throw in out our sperm when we ejaculate ejaculate we cannot piss basically either one or another thing not both so how does erection works there are a lot of different intimate things that turn people on so i will not go into that right now at least but what i will discuss basically we, we we see something or we touch something or we get some idea and our body our brains decide to throw some hormones and then a lot of different stuff happens uh, we get way more circulation in our body where we get uh, some nerves to get more attentive and also we get more blood flow to our penis and can you remember i told you about sponge like tissue in our shaft in shaft of our penis so male body penis and that's where this whole blood comes in and when that blood comes in and that sponge like tissue it fills it and through the uh, characteristics of the penis it erects it becomes a little bit bigger well, not a little bit it normally becomes bigger in width and also in length and it becomes in this state it comes in this state erect and basically starting from there it is very very difficult to piss because your prostate already decided okay we are ready to give away sperm we are not ready to give away urine this we cannot do it anymore either one or another thing not both speaking of ejaculation different male bodies need a little bit different amount of time to come to that point of orgasm but on average there are different numbers between two minutes and seven minutes it's more or less how much time men normally need uh, normally it doesn't mean always there are also people of there are also male bodies some males uh, that need way more like for example till half an hour and there are some people who need way less like one minute what is the biggest problem is the fact that this number is way smaller than by in female bodies female bodies need normally around 11 minutes if everything works works well again they also have different numbers depending on the woman on the female body on the body so yeah that brings me again to this point 
you don't have to do anything with everything with your penis. There are a lot of other things that you can do to arouse uh, your partner or make it to bring that partner to orgasm. There are a lot of different things. I will cover some of them in these videos, but yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And basically for men, orgasm uh, means ejaculation. Men should, and that is the best word for it, they should sperm into inside of the female body if the penis was there. Then semen travels through the female body and if they find their way to female reproductive organs, then embryo is created and after some time there will be children. But what's important to know, although there are a lot of uh, semen, so like semen seeds, if you can call it like that, in sperm of in each ejaculation, only a little amount of them survive until they can come and create an embryo, like a really little amount. And it's not something to worry about, it just sometimes takes time. And sometimes it takes also knowledge because women's reproductive cycle is something kind of interesting and important to know if you want to bring the child into the world. The small side topic which I will discover today too is erectile dysfunction. It is a topic that nobody likes to talk about because for most of men it is not death sentence but kind of it. Most of men associate their, as I told you already, their masculinity with being able to erect their penis and also most of men, if everything goes well, can do it in their late years, 60s, 70s, and they can still make children. But losing that ability for some men is like losing a part of themselves and losing a part of their masculinity. It can have different reasons. Most of men develop erectile dysfunction when they are uh, older because their blood system doesn't work like that, that good anymore and their testosterone levels uh, incl incline to decrease a little bit over time with age. That is why they develop this erectile dysfunction. But sometimes with some medication they still can everything, get everything going, I would call it like that. Another type which is not covered that much is psychological erectile dysfunction. It is when something is in your head, it's not really in different things and that is something that can happen to pretty much every male doesn't matter what age so starting from the age where a person at all can get erect uh, get get an erection so yes that is a thing when people that when a person is very stressed during the process prior to the process because of different reasons it can be connected to the partner it can be completely disconnected from the partner but yes male some people who have male bodies will experience or can experience uh, problems with erection because of stress because of some psychological reasons and it's not talked about enough in my personal opinion but yes it is not a nice feeling to have like if you have something like that this video was longer than i expected i knew that i have a lot to cover but i didn't expect it to, to be that long but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something if you didn't then okay then you have a lot of knowledge on yourself good for you <laughs> and except for that if you have any questions about male body and maybe any questions for my future videos in sex ed write them down below i will try to answer as many of them as possible maybe in the comments maybe in the future videos because i can only assume some of the questions like for example i know that some people wonder about the both sex situation do both really go